The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 473 Just kiss already! <laughs> Valet was cold. Terribly so, like she had been frozen from the inside out and left in a dark place for weeks on end. She could move, but didn't have the energy to shiver. Fortunately, something warm and fuzzy and pony-sized was pressed against her, and she snuggled it for all she was worth, brain moving at a glacial pace. She had been with friends. Maple needed comforting. She had been fighting someone. Her wings hurt at the bases, the same way they had in Iron Ridge after she spent uh, too long shadow-sneaking in Mare's shower stalls on particularly lonely days. She had... The realization of what it was she was snuggling hit her mind all at once and gave her enough of a burst of energy to open her eyes and jump away. Yeah! Her hind legs immediately became tangled in fabric and she hit the floor, the cold numbing every bit of pain. Yo! Valise scrambled backwards in her rear, dragging several blankets with her, still too slow to process her surroundings as Puddles set up in front of her, blinking harshly. Puddles! You! <laughs> Hiya, Puddles replied, neither exuberant nor sultry. You're lucky I have magical cold resistance, you know, because you're cold. No normal pony in their right mind would snuggle you right now. And whose fault is that? Well, he glittered her teeth. It felt like there was frost inside her body. Bananas, I hate losing. <sighs> she wrapped her wings around herself. This is dumb contact magic. Feels like I'm gonna freeze to death. Puddles beatifically smirked, sitting on a bed and patting a stack of blankets piled ten high. If you do, that's your fault. You're the one who got out of bed. Valet blinked, mind working frantically to speed back up. You iced me just so I'd be forced to cuddle you to stay warm? It had some other purposes, but yes, I did. I know my priorities. Puddles kept up her smug grin, then grew serious. Now get back in here. I may have overestimated just how much your pony bodies can take before going into a deep freeze, and I've never tried to thaw anyone before, so you could get seriously hurt if you're a baby about this. Hug, hug! She made plenty of room for Valet, inviting the bath pony back to her side. I hate you, Valet grumbled, pacing sluggishly back to the bed, and letting herself be hauled in. Mmm, -hmm. Puddles hummed in delight, nestling against Valet as hard as she could and rubbing her with her face. You're fun, too. The worst part was, it felt legitimately good. As cold as Valet was, ten blankets and another pony curled tightly around her made a big difference, and as Puddles took turns nuzzling and playing with her hooves, feeling actually began to return to her extremities. She was still frozen at the corvo, like every breath and heartbeat she took were made at half speed. Oh, no, that was the second worst part. She could have, should have, absolutely would have enjoyed every second of it and even reciprocated if she didn't already have a mare friend. They were in a room, there was a door, Valet saw her hat to the peg. This was one call she wasn't looking forward to making. Oh, did one even explain to their significant utter they had lost a fight against an enemy who was obsessed with cuddles, and now her life depended on doing just that? <laughs> Puddles murmured, moving up a bit and starting to nuzzle Valet's leafy ears. These are cold, too. Can't forget about them. I hate you so much, Valet repeated, thinking her ears were pressed against her skull, but not able to feel them enough to tell. Could you at least do this platonically? Platonically, pfft, Puddles huffed, snorting a breath in one of Valet's ears. I don't do romance. Too much giving and not enough taking. This is plenty platonic. Valet, snuggle me back. Valet refused to budge as Puddles kept hugging over her, trying to maximize the contact area between them. Yeah, right now you're in the daughter of a mare who looks like she could punch my head off with a single hit, and I really don't need reasons for her to be mad at me. And I'm pretty sure she said she was like a kid when you possessed her. Puddles shrugged against her. Her body grew up, 
And I told you, Puddles is no longer in here. Just me. Hmm, I need a name now that I'm free. Rather than helping, think one up, well, he snorted. You're free, my butt. The moment I get back on my hooves, I'll clean your clock, we'll go outside, and I'll get someone or other to tie you up even tighter than before. I'm sure you will. Puddles nuzzled her way up and down Valet's chest. Bananas, you need a doll or something, Valet sighed. And yeah, I will. Puddles continued nosing her way up until her and Valet's noses were touching. I have a doll, she whispered, making contact with her eerie pupilless eyes. It's you. I just wish you'd hug back. You obviously think this feels good, both now and before. So why won't you let yourself enjoy it? Hmm? The lady gritted her teeth. I told you because I already have a mere friend. She waited for a moment, then deflated as puddles didn't stop nuzzling. You know, because relationships are special. You want to be 100% there for someone else, which means not going around and, you know, or maybe you don't. I don't know what you're talking about, because right now we've clearly got each other all to ourselves. Yay, relationship! Puddles pressed a hoof against Valet's nose and stared back into her eyes. So enjoy it. I, but there's emotions and bananas. Uh, Valet's ears folded. Really that clueless, aren't you? If I am, you're the one that's stopping from having a good time, Puddles pointed out, seizing her nuzzling. You're clearly missing the point. I am a superior life form. I've evolved to the point where anything I want, I can get. I wanted you, I got you. Case in point. And in my infinite generosity, because I want to revel in being a harmonic creature, I am offering to share my good time with you. It doesn't really matter whether I'm clueless or not, because I want what I have, and I have what I want, and I'm not the one refusing to enjoy it over reasons that don't make sense. Puddles looked completely satisfied in her defense of her case. Valet cringed. Yeah, you know, you're starting to remind me uncomfortably of the way I used to be here, and take it from someone who knows... It's totally possible to convince yourself that the raw deal imaginable is totally normal and fine for like six whole years of garbage and make yourself think you're happy and that there's nothing better worth aiming for and... Uh, why am I trying to convince a Wendigo to be a good guy? I've been spending too much time around iron flanks. Oh, is it now? Puddles looked interested. See... I haven't had my head buried in the sand about things that are bigger and better for six years, Valet. I just had the raw deal imaginable. Yesterday, even. And then I went from being a shackled and chained lab experiment to a free bear all because of you. If you think I'm stopping here, you're a fool. Whatever else is out there for life to offer me, I will find it. But... She nuzzled Valet's ears once again. The only stupid thing for me to do would be not stopping to enjoy the perks I've just gotten. Like you. Hmm. I'm not a perk. I'm a pony. Valet winced as Puddles ran her muzzle across her cheek. She still didn't know if that was technically true, but for the sake of argument. What do you even think you have? A sack of meat and a fuzzy coat? I'm serious. Do you have any idea what you're missing out on by underestimating us? Oh, pfft. What are you talking about your soul? Puddles freed a hoof and waved it over her shoulder. I don't care about those. Fuzzy hugs are exactly what I want. Windigos don't have physical bodies, you know. But this pony gets all warm and tingly inside when she snuggles with cute mares, and it really makes it an interesting and delightful place to be. Valet grinned. She saw an opening. Don't care about souls, huh? Thoughts, emotions, feelings. Yeah, that's the part I missed out on, too. But it turns out you can follow around or stare at as many mares as you want, and as satisfying as it feels at first, it never gets more satisfying. You said you want to find out what else there is for life to offer you? Try getting to know someone. Having someone else care about you, be known by you, or want to be known by you. Bananas, I barely hung out with Amber for a few days, and I'm really invested in her because we actually clicked together. So, seriously, I may not be the most qualified to say this, but you're missing something even bigger than whatever you think you have. Puddles 
returned the grin, eyes like glacial lakes. So you're saying you know how to one-up even this? I, uh... Valet hadn't actually expected Puddles to go along with it. Yeah? Duff, because I don't buy it. Puddles instantly dashed her hopes, dragging her face for Valet's chest fluff. Here's the thing. I think I've got a great deal. There's no self-delusion involved. I know what I had, and I knew how much better this is. You're saying you have a better deal, but that they're mutually exclusive. Then I'd have to respect you and stop using you like a hugging toy to get it. Next thing I know, you'll also tell me I'm not allowed to break into establishments or vandalize fountains with ice sculptures. Think you're going to twist the windigo to the side of caring about lovey-dovey pony feelings and emotions? Like a shark, she slid so that they were again face to face. Because from where I'm standing, there's a very easy way to do it. Meh. Valet's ears folded. Puddles gave a cheery wink. Show me they're not mutually exclusive. Enjoy yourself a little, Valet. Innocent little snuggles. I know you want to and are holding yourself back. And what kind of caring lover would this Amber be if she didn't want you enjoying yourself while you were far apart? I'm not asking anything dirty or dangerous, and believe me, I do know about those. Now show me being in cute little pony love doesn't make you a boring stick in the mud and prevent you from enjoying having a real physical body, and I'll give your feelings some of my time. Bananas, I hate you, Valet grumbled, moving her own limbs and putting them around Puddles. I don't even know what the good thing to do is here. Puddles gave an audible squee at the hug, doubling her own grip on Valet and rocking back and forth beneath the blankets. Depends on your morality system, but the only one that matters to me is to look after yourself and ditch whatever losers can't keep up. I'm already breaking that by sharing with you, but any system where taking care of yourself isn't a good thing is useless to me. Good choice. Also, see, I'm trying to make you happy. Aw, Puddles cares about your feelings already. Yay! Don't patronize me, Vali protested, a disgruntled spark inside her telling her that she held in her limbs an extremely frustrating mayor who was begging for that frustration to be taken out for aggressive snuggling, but it was just an empty body belonging to a pony who had deserved none of the things that happened to her under the control of a chaotic, wintry puppeteer. Her frustration drained, washed away by a wave of lucidity at the sheer absurdity of the situation. A mythical demon, powerful enough to destroy an entire city, and somehow all it wanted was for her to snuggle its possessed pony body. <sighs> she actually laughed. Any knowledge about how that situation had come about didn't matter, because if this was an illogical dream, it was a whole lot better than what real life could throw at her. Chuckling helplessly, Valet hugged Puddles, but didn't burrow into her coat with any of the enthusiasm the Earth Pony had. Bananas! Amber probably wouldn't believe me even if I told her exactly what just happened. I don't get you at all! Have your stupid hugs. <laughs> Yay! Now you get it! Puddles cheered, going limp and letting herself be used as a pillow. Relax and enjoy yourself! Yeah! <laughs> Could you not laugh like that? Valeria requested, looking up. It reminds me of, uh, her, and it's making this even more awkward than it already is. Puddles rolled her eyes and obliged, settling for tucking Valet's forehead beneath her chin. Also, I'm still seriously cold. This is gonna wear off, right? I hope so. Puddles shrugged. I only bullied the manager into giving us this hotel room for two nights, so if you're not up by tomorrow, I'll have to carry you. And high adventure when you can barely move doesn't sound all that fun. Valet narrowed her eyes. High adventure? Yeah, right. I'm still slugging you and then hauling you back to Chauncey and the hospital the moment I get my strength back. In fact, I bet I could take you on right now. There's gonna be a lot of dudes ticked at you after that fight. Ooh, are you? Puddles smiled so hard, Valet felt her chin stretching with the top of her head. Don't be so sure about that. Yeah? Why not? Valet frowned. I'm at my best right after a loss because I've got something to prove. And now... I know how you fight, too. Puddles sounded confused. Fighting? I wasn't fighting. I was trying to hug you, Valet. Mm -hmm. She happily tousled Valet's emerald mane with her face. 
<sighs> Vully grimaced. Fine, whatever. What makes you think you can stop me? Are these feeling better yet? Puddles asked, playing with Vully's ears. What can cute Vully hear? Don't call me cute. Vully freed a hoof and rubbed it over her ears, brushing Puddles away. I, uh, something in the distance? I don't know, wind? Puddles kicked the blankets off, still hugging Vallée. Vallée shivered at a sudden influx of non-heated air and was immediately popped onto Puddles' back as the autumn bear got up. Here, feast your eyes! She trotted across the room, which Vallée was finally able to examine. Square, small, and dark, with a wooden plank floor bearing a coat of varnish that might have been a hundred years old, and plaster that looked like it was applied directly to log walls, it had one door... One small, well-furnished bed, a tiny table, and a low, wide window with the curtains drawn. Definitely a budget hotel, all right. If you're trying to tell me we're here for a honeymoon, Vallée growled, where in this Valdi are we anyway? Bananas, this architecture looks kind of different, but I wasn't really paying attention. Rather than answer, Puddles cheerfully flung the curtains open, revealing the sea. Blah! Valet's jaw went slack for a moment. Wait, what? How? I thought we were bajillions of miles inland. There's supposed to be a whole nother province west of Isvaldi before this. What did you do? Convince some speedy friends we were worth giving a ride. Puddles shrugged, balancing Valet on her back. Far away, isn't it? As far as everyone else knows, we could be anywhere in the continent, and even if they trace our route, Wallace is gone, so I can smash whatever they send to get me. And even if you take me down, good luck carrying me all the way back there without breaking any laws. Valet stared for a moment, a gentle grassy slope separating the room from a trunk-strewn beach with the ocean beyond. It looked like an overly pleasant day out, with a few distant clouds and a stallion playing catch with two foals out in the field. It's also a great spot for a vacation, Puddles added, turning so she could grin at Valet. Pretty sure I said this. I still hate you. Valet buried her face in Puddles' mane. In frustration. End of chapter 473